Welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. Mr. Magazine, I recently heard from someone, and I, I really don't remember who. It was somebody online, uh, one of the uh, people who's got a YouTube channel. And they made the statement. You really narrowed it down there. It really did. Well, okay, a collectibles YouTube <laughs> channel or a retail YouTube channel. All right. Um, they made the statement that the worst offer you can make is no offer. Worst offer you can make. I have to disagree with that. Okay. Because sometimes people will come in and think they have a gold mine. Okay. So say they come in with an item that is worth fifty dollars. Okay. Anything is worth two hundred or five hundred. It doesn't even matter. Well, if I make them an offer twenty bucks, of twenty bucks, they're going to think I'm trying to steal this five hundred dollar item from them. So I tell them, I go, honestly, the best thing is, you know, I'm not interested. You know, I w you know, it's, I'm not going to make you any offer. I feel any offer you'd be insulted. I think you should sell it elsewhere and get more money for it. You know, Craigslist, Facebook, wherever mm -hmm. like that. So that's what I would say. So to me, no offer is better than you giving them a low offer. And even if it's not a low offer, they're going to think it is. And then they're totally insulted and think you're ripping them off. Interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Um, that's kind of why I keep you around. Um, and, th and that kind of ties in now that you mention that. Um, <clears throat> similarly. However, hold that thought. Before I forget mine. Sometimes I purposely make no offer though, mm -hmm. because they want to. They shop it around. So okay. I will tell them, I have an offer, but I'm not going to give you my offer if you're still shopping it around. I don't like playing the game. Usually I lose out anyways, or they never come back. So I'll say you get other offers, and then come back to me, and then we'll talk. So sometimes I'll play that game, mm -hmm. but just for that reason only. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Well, and, and I mentioned before where you have somebody in there, and they and it kind of ties into what you, you first said there. They've got some book that they think, this is a first print. And you're like, no, it's not. It doesn't yeah. have a price on the jacket. It says BC, well, BC Book Club Edition on the jacket. Sure. And if you look in the back, it's embossed. This is a you know book club edition. It's worth $50, not $1,000 <laughs> uh, type deal. And you're right, in a case like that, and again, we've mentioned it before, then all of a sudden they go, well, what do you offer me on it? Give me 25 bucks? I don't want to buy it from you because your friend's not going to believe. Right, right. <laughs> so I don't want you going to your friend and him saying, I ripped you off. No, I don't want to buy it from you. No, you know, Whatever. I, I, I do appreciate you trusting me, but. Right. So let's go back to the original statement, and what do you think that they meant when they said the worst offer you can make is no offer? Um... I can only guess that they feel that if you tell a customer that's selling you something, I'm not going to make you an offer. Well, if you say I'm not interested, I don't deal in it, it's one thing. Okay. If you say I do deal in that stuff, but I'm not interested or I'm not going to make you an offer, you may never, ever see them again. So they may go, I'm not going to go back to that guy. I had, you know, I had that rare tennis racket. He didn't want to make an offer on it, so why am I going to, why am I going to bring him this you know, rare basketball or whatever you're selling? You know, so. See, and I took it a little differently, and, and I wish I could remember who had said that, but the way I took it was more, I go to somebody's house on a house call, and they've got 25 boxes of books, <clears throat> and not complete junk, not great, but I could probably move it. They want it gone. And if I walk out, if, if it's something I potentially could make some money off of, and it's mm -hmm. not a crazy amount of work, obviously they got 25 boxes worth of Hartleton romances that have all been stored in the garage and are, are moldy. No, I'm not going to make an offer regardless. I, I would tell them to yeah. recycle those. Or even, well, 500 or 1,000 boxes, because then if it's if okay, well, you're putting it all anyways. It's not worth it at that point. But say they got 20 to 25 boxes of stuff, um, that you know they're cleaning out an estate, their their mother died or whatever. They mm. they want the stuff gone. Sure. If it's stuff that I can potentially make money on, without an insane amount of work. Yeah. Even if I offer them twenty dollars for those twenty five boxes of books, that is an incredibly low offer. Mm -hmm. But it's better than me walking out and not making them an offer. Because if I walk out, they've still got those 25 boxes of books, right. and they don't know what to do with them, and they don't care. They would probably, in some instances, just give them to me. Just well, take yeah. them, get them out of here. I don't care right. because I, 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 and people do this. 
I don't want him to end up in a landfill. Right. I want him to go to somebody that will appreciate him. My mother read all of right. these books. I just don't want him in a landfill. But I don't want to take him and haul him all off to the library sale. I don't want to haul him all yeah. off to Goodwill. I don't want to do that. If you just take them, you know, so, so to them in an instance like that, the money is meaningless. Whether you offer them $5, yeah. nothing, or $100, they don't care. They're not in it right. for the money. They want them going to a good home. But if you walk out and make no offer, they forget who you are. You're the guy that left and didn't buy them. Whereas if you buy them, now we know, hey, this guy's buying these. Now you got a new connection. Right. Right. Yeah. So it is an interesting topic. Uh, definitely. I, I don't think you can blanket say, as Mr. Magazine so aptly pointed out, I don't think you can blanket say that the the worst offer you can make is no offer. There are times where you don't make the offer. Yeah. Um, I'll give you another example. Uh, I don't run into this, but you potentially do because you've got a storefront. Guy comes in, some, some well, we'll leave the 17-year-old. You're not supposed to buy from somebody 17 because they can't enter a binding contract. Some 18-year-old kid comes in, mm. and he's got some stuff, some sports cards that there's really no way he should have. Right. Or he's got some stuff that there's really no way. Where'd you get him? Uh, I found him. <laughs> My uncle gave him to me. Or, you know, whatever. Well, even if they're even yeah. stupider than that, I yeah. found him. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, in an instance like that, yes, you don't make an offer because you're ninety nine point nine percent sure that he did not truly find them. Right. <laughs> I found them in my pocket as I was walking out of the show. <laughs> How'd those end up in there? Um, I just don't happen to have the four point six million dollar Luca card. <laughs> I found it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. So of course there are those instances as well. If you get a a, a very if your spider sense starts going off basically and you're like something's not right about this deal. Um, and you may have been in the middle of, and I don't know if you have or not, but were you ever in the middle of some uh, inheritance issues or divorce issues or anything like that, where like the wife's trying to sell the husband's cards or one kid grabs the uh, grabs the stuff from grandpa's estate and is trying to sell it, and then the other kids don't know he's trying to sell it? Yeah. Definitely. Those things just get couple, messy. A couple times, yeah. I don't think you remember that one time with those um, older baseball programs. They're like high grade from the 50s. Right. And I bought them all, you know, 50 bucks, whatever it was. I paid, you know, a little under what I should have, but I didn't steal them by any means. And then someone comes in the next day and says, I'm, a, I'm the relative. You got to give them back to me. I'm like, okay, get the police here. Right. Because they were stolen then. Never seen them again. But, you know, it could have been a family member, but just say, hey, maybe they thought I sold them too cheap and they wanted them back or they had someone who's going to pay more. Who knows? But yeah, like you said, it does get messy. Yep, yep. It's always so. In a case like that, you just you just walk away and you're like, no, 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 I don't want an offer. And I think the final time when I would say, and, and you brought it up as well, would be one of those. Somebody emails me and says, I got a great deal from you. Forty thousand comic boxes, <laughs> golden age yeah. through present. Yeah, da, 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 da. you know, you're like, yep, that's a great, you know, and I want a hundred thousand dollars. Like, yeah, that's an unbelievable deal. Yeah, I don't know what I could possibly do with them at all. That's <laughs> yeah. just too good of a deal. Thank you. Yep. Um, I, I can't store that many boxes. I just cannot. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Do hit the like button if you could, and we will see you next video. Take care. Bye bye.